listeners and viewers uh, welcome to this week's episode of Kenya's Market Map Market Map Kenya's Market Map is a podcast where we discuss the financial happenings in Kenya and around the region that would affect um basically Kenya's capital and financial markets um so before we go on if you're viewing this on YouTube please remember to like subscribe share comment uh, comment yeah um and press that notification bell so that you can always be notified whenever a video goes up so this has been an interesting week um but before we go um Easter Kigen um how has your week been Kigen um I'm Kigen I've had a great week yeah moving very fast uh, yeah. yep Easter um again I'm Easter um my week has been again very fast this has passed the month is coming to a close before before you know it it are going to be december but yeah uh, my week has been nice um no major highlights oh uh, yeah yeah okay um yeah so as usual it's the three musketeers um <laughs> <laughs> this week being led by myself daniel kalia yep. um we have ista fanning and we have kigen kiplimo who said about that day um so getting right to it um this past week there have been a number of things yep. that have been going on and i think the first thing that we saw in the week that has passed um longhorn released their financial results yeah and then which we saw them coming back to profitability after a while yeah. um then we also saw a report by Blue- bloomberg that showed the Diamond Trust Bank uh, was ranked the worst performing bank yeah um in the in the NSE this year yeah, yeah. um so i think we'll get into why they had they're doing they're not doing well or why is the market not rewarding them mm-hmm. or is it that the market is punishing them um yeah then of course kenya's debt situation um we've seen the report by the central bank on kenya's debt um the the governor mentioned that um SGR is taking about 11% of mm, yeah. Kenya's external debt yeah that is that's a lot that's more than i thought um so yeah questions on the debt um is it something that we should be concerned about is it something that is stable is it yeah are we just okay um and then we saw the world bank saying that they are no longer going to be um publishing their uh, ease of doing business reports yeah yeah that was that i didn't see that coming but it's like the 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 house on the hill did not get a memo <laughs> because <laughs> barely one day after the world bank announces that yeah they have stopped publishing the report yeah. you find a tweet by state house referring to the world bank is of doing re- business report on on something and you're like, themselves there hey okay there was an un- unread message from world bank so blue ticks <laughs> um yeah we saw fuel prices rising again um which now of course to match up raw um and as expected the politicians are coming on twitter being like oh oh we are going to have to check why these prices are going up the way we had they have the, the the ability to go and legislate in parliament yeah. yeah yet always whenever something like this happens they they come to social media to uh, to rant and to vent like the rest of us yeah and because yet, feel like they're with us yeah yet they are they are they're the ones with the power yeah. and so my my question on this would be they okay first of all why is it the prices rose so high yet the underlying prices of crude mm. like did not rise significantly and then what is going to be the impact on inflation and with inflation poised to rise that's my uh forecast yeah. um at this point is the cbk actually able to um come up with policies to come yeah them. are they able to like rein in inflation once it start kicking in um yeah then lastly in an interesting fresh off uh, the press 
uh, we've seen Netflix is offering free uh, mobile plan in Kenya. However, it is only for Android users. Um, so iPhone people, I, iPhone. Hey. My God, <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve Jobs is gonna wake up from his grave. <laughs> uh, iPhone people, I think, yeah, you guys are considered wealthy, and top one percent. You do not need free things. Please, it's going to be uh, having a negative impact on the brand quality of mm. iPhone. Having uh, free items on your phone, please. That leave us, leave those to uh, Android pigs. Yeah, Android folk. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll just get right into it. The yeah. first one, uh, Longhorn, and their financial results. Um, yeah. So <coughs> looking at the Longhorn financial results, excuse me. <coughs> Someone is trying to, you know. Just up my throat. <laughs> anyway, their revenue went up by 16%, um, which is good. Um, I can attribute that to, you know, uh, parents, you know, the economy reopening up and parents having money to, you know, buy more books and kids are back to school. So the schools, you know, um, cash flow has come back. So they have money to, to you know, um, buy more books and the like. So that increased their revenue. Um, they, they, they turned it around. There was a profit of 7 million. Um, down from 225 million, which is really good. <coughs> However, um, an interesting thing to note for our viewers is actually that if you look at Longhorn um, in their operations in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, you find that their revenue, um, 83% came from Uganda, 18% mm. came from Kenya, and 8% came from Tanzania. So actually more business is coming from Uganda than Kenya as many would think that that was my perception earlier on until the numbers clarified that. Um, something that that just is bothering me and I, I, I'd appreciate your help guys to you know dissect this for our viewers. On relative basis that is, mm -hmm. if I look at their operating expense and the, f the operating cost and the finance cost, on a relative basis, the finance cost is 60% the operational cost. So in my mind, is like, th this is a lot, right? So how, how do, you know, finance cost for some of our viewers who may not know, you know, these are costs from, example, interest from banks that you pay, you know, if you acquired a certain asset, the interest and the likes, that is the finance cost. So on relative basis, if you compare, it's 60% the operational cost. Yeah. So for me, this is, this is really high. And so what does this mean, guys? Um... First of all, the fact that you only get an interest expense if you have a uh, debt. That yeah. is too much that, yeah? yeah. Where, which is the source of that um, debt. Mm -hmm. source, of, source of that expense, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it means for the expense to be that high, it means they took, in, took up a lot of debt. And I could not understand this because um, the debt, instead of reducing, it was coming up. If you look at the outstanding loan liability yeah. in 2019, against and you compare it against the loan liability in 2020 yeah. it was higher you know i expected that because expected that they took a loan last year yeah. incurred a lot of expense in interest yeah repaid it so this year you could expect it to come lower but that's not the case so i don't know if they took up more debt in the course of the year or something like that but um back to your question um the loan the ex interest expense is high because they took up loan a loan yeah a huge amount of loan, a significant amount of loan. Yeah. And they took up this loan for various reasons. You could, companies to take um, loans for various reasons. That is either to survive, to, if not to survive, to expand. Now for the case of Longhorn Publishers yeah. last year, they were seeking this loan to expand. The, if you look at the plans, I think even it's in the investor um, presentation. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they want to go to. They want to open shop in Ghana, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. DRC, DRC yeah. Um, Cameroon as yeah. well. We should talk about DRC by the because ever since we started this podcast, it's like it's like they're, they're following our lead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, every yeah. single time like yeah. we have to talk about DRC. Someone yes. is getting into DRC, pumping in cash there in investments. Yeah. But anyway, but um, even actually, uh, quickly before we come back to this yeah. long horn yeah. Yeah. yeah why 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 DRC? Why? why are guys going to drc it's 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 a long it's a very wide um, <laughs> um spectrum of things mm -hmm. um first of all the fundamentals are 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 are, are right mm -hmm. they have their fundamentals right they have a huge population DRC is big big the biggest country in sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, just just to paint that picture of of, of size. Yeah. The whole of Western Europe. If yeah. you take the whole of Western yeah. Europe. Yeah. 
it's the size of DRC. Yeah. You see Belgium, the one that colonized the DRC. Yeah. Belgium can fit 86 times into DRC. <laughs> Do you actually know that from the capital Kinshasa yeah. to Goma where where Jumbo Jet launched flights. Yeah. From Kinshasa to Goma is actually farther than from Nairobi to Goma. <laughs> from Nairobi to Goma is 1250 kilometers. From Kinshasa to Goma uh, is 2500 kilometers. Country is big, big country, it's massive. Big. 2500 Now, kilometers. Yeah? So if you think about it, Nairobi Nairobi is closer. Mombasa <laughs> is 400. Yeah. Is it 400? Kenya is a small country. Whoa, whoa. 480 something. Yeah, let's give, let's say 500. Okay. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah. Okay. So that means Kinshasa, Goma, it's four times, five times. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long journey. So don't journey. And you know what? Um actually and, and then if you compare it to Rwanda uh, from Goma to Kigali it's just a three hour drive. <laughs> Okay. Our listeners <laughs> may, at this point you. our listeners and viewers are like these guys they're not Kenyans come from somewhere around <laughs> but anyway um where was i um long on a yeah, no fundamental why, why, why people are getting into population yeah. it's a big country so now it being a big country that a country that big mm-hmm. now it still has on top of that it has a lot of minerals mm-hmm. so if you can just envision the the size and then imagine that the most of that land is arable first of all it is such okay not saturated but because it's been mined for quite some time now it has a lot of mineral deposits yeah. and the minerals they have mm-hmm. are very um in demand very much in demand and yeah, the cobalt yeah this coltan yeah now if you just to paint a picture of how 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 big a player DRC is in the mineral sector yeah. especially with regards to when you talk about, about um cobalt mm-hmm. um DRC supplies 47% oh has 47% of total coltan um, deposits in the world yeah that's almost half and then it last year it's last year they supplied 47% of the of of coltan to the global market yeah so it's a big player mm-hmm. there's demand for that mm-hmm. and that trade it has enhanced um growth of infrastructure and all that if you look at the countries the the the, the cities i mean kenya so since the revolution started i'm thinking about counties always okay um, when you look at the cities in DRC that yeah. is Kinshasa mm-hmm. those big cities the infrastructure there is coming up at a very high rate uh so the the the, 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 the infrastructure which is really the support one of the supporting pillars of any good infrastructure any good investment platform yeah. mm-hmm. are there we have infrastructure we have um when you talk about infrastructure you have connectivity internet connectivity it is fairly yeah. it is not the best but it is it it works yeah i mean and so also for me my take home is the fact that drc has a population of 92 million people so that's that's a good yeah, population yeah, you know, if you're yeah, a company yeah. you're seeing you know there's there's potential for your products you yeah. know this market if no. you're a government you no, know just just taxes, to come in yeah. just to come in after you said that our aspect that you have to consider is that of that population 90 92 92 yeah, million yeah, yeah 78% are live below the poverty line that is people who survive in less than 1.24 dollars per day yeah they're below that level so really if you look at such people such numbers um these are people with no much not much um yeah. um what income disposable yeah, income disposable income yeah it's actually it's actually 1.9 dollars yeah not one point, line. yeah, yeah we, so, i think we, we might have to do a special edition on drc mm-hmm, yeah <laughs> but yeah. but i think uh, an, another interesting thing would be I don't know the political mm. situation yeah. seems to be improving improving yeah, yeah we saw a, transi- a peaceful transition of power the first from, one ever yeah. from um, uh, Kabila to Tshisekedi no, mm. is it no, yeah. 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 yeah yeah and I think that for me in my opinion I think that is the biggest mm. thing for any investor yeah. Yeah. who's okay. going to put up capital yeah. or you're going to have a significant uh, FDI investment mm. in a foreign country yeah. knowing that the 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 political, political environment is good. yeah is good yeah, they, yeah and uh, they are also posed to join the um, the east african community yeah. they have actually been the the i think they've actually been cleared by yeah. the east african community uh, which is headed by peter mathuki yeah. so it's just being taken now they have to take that report to yeah. the heads of state mm-hmm. the six head of states for them to approve now joining mm-hmm. and this this has come this is an, it's interesting because there were other guys who had requested earlier you know who are still at the back burners waiting for approval like mm-hmm. somalia like mm-hmm. ethiopia mm-hmm. so drc has bypassed them mm-hmm. but my question to you guys is going back to longhorn do you think that 
long haul, you know, the finance cost, we've, we can relate it to huge borrowing. So is that huge borrowing, is it warrant, is it because they want, is it because of the expansion that they want to do in, in the countries we've listed? Oh my God. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that is what they explained. Uh, the increase in the finance costs because they said they made investments um, for regional expansion, yeah. um, a, a product diversification, and then digital transformation. Mm-hmm. I think with um, what's it called? With COVID last year and schools being closed, yeah. I think they launched. Is it SOMA? Yeah, which is so, um, you know they're about they should launch it by is it quarter two twenty next yeah year, quarter two twenty oh they haven't yeah. launched it yeah, I thought they, I think it's still in the pipeline was, I'm not yeah, sure they were just oh. trying it out oh unless it was a pilot because yeah. I think I remember seeing something like that w- which was supposed to help learners as they study from home and teachers mm-hmm. to the whole online platform so I think they are making investments in that um, then regional uh, presence um, so they entered. Uh, DRC and Cameroon last year oh. and this year um, I think this year uh, they should be entering the Ghana market mm. nice. so that's what um, the the finance costs uh, increasing right. because those right. funds although the interesting thing is if you to look at their their as a statement of financial position mm. um, their borrowings did not change significantly Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I don't know whether that was is because of whatever liabilities they had previously. Mm-hmm. Whether there's a facility that maybe they settled then uh, took on a new one mm-hmm. uh, in on new terms, but the change in the borrowings was not that significant um, to 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 see a twenty percent jump in finance cost. So unless there's something that um, is missing, but anyway, generally, whatever new borrowings that they took, yeah. that's the justification. Yeah, I think Centum Centum. Now I think they have a smile on their face uh, following the the seven million profit. Um, what's uh, they have the leading stake? Yeah, they are, they have controlling stake should oh. be sixty eight percent. No, I remember I remember um, the f- very first thing that came to my mind when I when I saw about when I saw the the huge um, finance cost being yeah. in comparison to the operational um, costs. Yeah, um, it was first. I asked myself, I wondered whether it was whether this company, Longhorn, was mm-hmm. over leveraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, that might not be the case because for you to say that your a company is over leveraged is when um it's not able to meet its 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 debt repayments on time and then in when the situation gets dire, it cannot even be able to to to, to make payments towards the um interest yeah. for this loan and even sometimes the principal. Yeah. That's not quite the case. But and then again to prove that further um, is that if you look at the the fundamentals, that is the the ratios now. Yeah. That is the ratios used to measure the leveraging of a company. Yeah. Um, it's it's still not there. If you look at the equity to the debt to equity ratio. Yeah. Uh, but you can see it's over leveraged. But is it headed there? That becomes the question. Is it headed there? Because um, if they start now struggling to pay this to make these debt repayments. Now that is where it is headed, and I don't think now Moria will be smiling anymore. I think that will 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 have to wait and see. I think that that might come out very clearly in their in their full year results. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. I don't think it's um. It's. I don't think they'll be struggling because mm. if you're to look at um the growth numbers in revenue, mm. um. As Keegan had mentioned, yeah. um, when it comes to their revenue growth, so for the company, it was overall for the group mm. was sixteen percent growth. Okay. Yeah. However, um, Kenya grew by eighteen mm-hmm. percent. Um, Tanzania eight percent. Uganda is the one that had a big jump at eighty three percent of revenue growth. Oh, that was revenue growth. Keegan, yeah. you said it was contributions. Oh, no, it was, it was oh, yeah, it was oh, revenue okay. growth. Revenue. Yeah. Um, so t- a country like Tanzania had four straight years of revenue growth. Yeah. Um, Uganda surpassed um, one million dollars yeah. in revenue, yeah, well, yeah. and it's interesting because Uganda w- was under stricter lockdown compared to Kenya. Uh, yet yeah. their revenue growth uh, was considerable. So I don't know whether there are any underlying dynamics that led to people buying more books and contributing towards the growth of Longhorn in Uganda mm. compared to Kenya. 
Oh. It would be interesting. Probably maybe in the in 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 maybe the jump is because last year because this is half year results, right? Half year Mm-hmm. last no, year. No, this is the full. Yeah. For the year ended 30th June. June. Yeah. For the year ended 30th mm-hmm. June. So probably the jump, you know a jump means that probably in the year before that uh, things were really bad in uh, Uganda. Yeah. Uh, so that the jump was really huge. Yeah. Uh, probably it came from a negative. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can't be negative. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, why negative growth. The, oh. the, the reason I was talking about this uh, revenue growth in these different countries mm. is if this trend is to continue in the countries that they've gone into yeah. is just african countries um no but now with drc uh, 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 yeah. and um cameroon yeah. and if the if and when they get into ghana if the revenue growth in these countries as well mm. is as good as what they are seeing in the uganda, other countries uganda. in uganda tanzania then it, it should be sufficient to cover uh, their the their the cost of getting into those markets yeah it yeah. should be able to cover their their debt uh, uh, service their debt uh, so they won't struggle so i don't think they would struggle and i think they have 24.5% kenyan market share okay so if they're able to also grab considerable market shares in these other countries yeah. then i think they should be able to do, to to be okay something that did not make sense to me until you mentioned that they only control a 24% stake of the kenyan market mm-hmm. that you see the curriculum the kenyan curriculum changed from 8 to 4 to cbc yeah so they it's, it's still in the process a, of transitioning <laughs> so people are buying the people are buying a lot of these cbc textbooks and all that mm-hmm. yeah so expected that because of, people are more or less desperate because you have really have no no option other mm-hmm. than buying these new cbc books mm-hmm. you, you get me yeah so th- with that i would expect that the revenue in kenya would jump by a, a, a larger margin than it did but then if you say that it controls only 24% of the market then it makes sense no i think i think in in the transition phase yeah. mm-hmm. i think there tends to be a bit of uncertainty even parents are not sure w- which to buy and and the likes but i just want to note one thing as you said they are controlling 24% when it comes to books in kenya we have a huge problem to when we're dealing with with counterfeit items mm. Mm. okay mm. Yeah. so we've we've seen times without number that yeah. counterfeit books have been numbed in have been numbed in in either the Mombasa port Those in either Busia Boda yeah. Namanga mm. yeah. Boda post and that's 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 a huge factor because i can tell you if you walk in Nairobi downtown wherever and for every copy of book you find mm. for every 10 copies you might find that probably even six are counterfeit I've so that, that really it has a really I can actually say I can mm. actually this is this is not um this is I don't have the right figures but I'm just estimating probably counterfeit products have 60% of the market mm. yeah that conspiracy is a big deal yeah. um in Kenya um yeah so that's uh something but then another thing also another like spanner in the works yeah. we've seen there's a parent who's going to the high court mm-hmm. to stop to petition to have cbc stopped because she argues that it is imposing an economic burden on children teachers parents and caregivers so that raises the risk of cbc potentially uh, being done away with yeah. and we're going back to the old system mm-hmm. and then now it will have automatically have implications on publishers yeah publishers uh, i think uh, also players in the academic sector who are yeah. making uh, plans for cbc because um, the first group of cbc is now in class 5 yeah yeah so they should be going to class 6 next year mm-hmm. okay and then for cbc after class 6 is when you go to junior high mm-hmm. so that first lot should be having their final exam next year and i think there are many people who are planning on uh, making capital investments in whatever if it's schools in whatever to be ready for mm, for cbc changes, yeah. so you can imagine if someone has plowed in a considerable amount of capital mm. and then the court comes and says okay um this one we are not we are not going to go on with cbc yeah. anymore yeah. and we've seen that we've seen the impact of people private citizens going to to court mm, yeah. yeah we've seen that with kra and mm. minimum tax yeah. um we saw that with the bbi mm. um so yeah private citizens going to to court can actually change policy mm. in in a number of ways and yeah talking about private citizens going to court 
and having an impact on policy. Uh, We saw minimum tax uh, has been stopped by the High Court. Has been quashed. Yes, it has been quashed. Why are you rubbing it? <laughs> rubbing it in? <laughs> no, because I, I agree a hundred percent with yeah. with the ruling. Okay, um, right. I think it was a regressive tax. Okay, you guys are aware that Kiara has appealed though. Has, has, has but set out yes, the, the question yeah. is they're appealing as, as who? who? As who? Actually, actually, what do you mean as who? First of all, let's let's demystify because some people some people probably think. The people who have saved Kenya yeah. is actually the Kitengela Bar Owners Associations mm. because it's them who, who went to court in Machakos High Court. Shere, shere. And, the ca- <laughs> and the case was against the National Assembly, yeah. against KRA, yeah. and the Attorney General. Mm. So actually, KRA shouldn't be appealing. Why are they appealing? Because KRA, remember KRA, they don't they never come up with any tax policy. Yeah. It's not their work to come up with tax policy. They don't make the laws. It's actually the National Assembly who passed this thing. So it's if anyone is to appeal it, it should be the National Assembly. Wow. Because National Assembly are the ones who make laws. Oh, that's why Kalia was like, Kerry's yeah, appealing why, as why, why, why are okay, they appealing? No, I get, okay? I get, I get. But again, I think mm-hmm. it was... It was as as as, as Jajo Dunga said, you know, the people who whom are genuinely not making profits, who mm-hmm. are who are making losses, yeah. will be sacrificed, yeah. you know, at the expense of few people mm. who are evading and and avoiding taxes mm. in this case. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I sure. totally agree with that. Yeah. It was an aggressive tax, according to me. Yeah. And I I sense desperation in all this. I really sense me desperation by, 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 by the, government the government of Kenya. Yeah. Because yeah. We, 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 are, we are at a bad, we are at the red zone when it comes mm. to debt. Yeah. Okay. Mm. You know, our repayments are due. Um, the control of budget, we saw um, she issued a report where that for every 100 shillings that Kenya collects, yeah. that 6.6 shillings goes to debt repayment. Okay. And in yeah. that, you are supposed to, to give 12 shillings to county governments. Then, you know, you have recurrent expenditure and you want to do development. Yeah. So there's really no money for development. Yeah. By the time we'll be approaching 2022, Next year, August, in the elections, this it will actually be fifty shillings going to mm. to to yeah. debt repayment because they would have matured. Yeah. So this they is, would this have is, matured, and the way the shilling is going as well, we are at one hundred and ten shillings, and this is it's this increasing is, day by day. Allow me to be political a bit. I think anyone who wants to be president in twenty twenty two should not even come up with a manifesto because you are not going to do anything because mm. there won't be any money for development. Mm. So don't even come with a manifesto. Just tell us how you you work. But the out voters understand that, that though. Yeah. But but going back to the KRA issue, I'm happy. Um, if there was any appeal, I really hope it gets quashed. Because in Kenya, in most of the if you if you invested a business, it would probably break even in after a thousand days. That is three years. Yeah, yeah. 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 And oh. I think for context, there's some um, high level I think analysis that was done by at. Mir Mir Thakar. Thakar. Yeah, on Twitter. I don't know how it's Shout pronounced. Shout out to him. Yeah, but basically what he said was well, with Longhorn, um, mm. with the results. So Longhorn made a profit of seven million. Yeah. Um, from a revenue of one point two billion. Mm. But anyway, with minimum tax, had they been charged minimum tax, then they would have made a loss mm. of five million. Five million. Or five, five million. million. <laughs> million sorry. Eh. Yeah. Eh. So imagine, like, if a, 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 a company as big as Longhorn, which has revenues of one point two b, you're still not being minimum. Just the virtue of you being charged minimum tax yeah. is going to cause you to go to losses. Yeah. You can imagine the SMEs and other businesses mm. how how big they would be struggling essentially it did not make sense from the get go mm. um it's 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 very punitive it yeah. does not foster um it will not foster economic growth yeah. it will not foster entrepreneurship it does yeah. not foster uh it does not create a good env- environment for businesses to thrive mm. in Kenya and i think the externalities Again, I've mentioned, I think there's something that the government usually misses, in my opinion. They tend to go for what they see now mm. instead of looking at it mm. uh, from the bigger picture. Mm. Because you child minimum tax, companies go into losses. Mm. They lay people off. Yeah. No pay. No pay. Uh, they close, no yeah. corporate tax. Yeah, spending is reduced. Uh, then your VAT uh, goes, down goes down as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so generally now, you're killing the, golden, the goose that lays the golden egg. Mm. Because once I think as a government, your priority should be to make sure that businesses thrive as much as possible. Mm, absolutely, enabling yeah. environment. Yeah, that is what. But 
at all at all. But here's the question: there is minimum tax, yeah. and then there's turnover tax. Yeah, yeah. So minimum tax is the one that has been quashed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but turnover, turnover tax, tax, I think it applies for specific people. Um, yeah, it, it, there's a threshold. Is it 500? Is it? It's either 500 million or 5 million. 5 uh, million. If yeah, your sales million. exceed 5 million, now you need to pay turnover tax, and it's a final tax, the turnover tax. So once you pay it, then it's like corporate tax or something. You you've know, paid. You've paid your dues, uh-huh. and then now just to make reference to what Kalia talked about, um, we started having this comparison between if big companies would be suffering by as much as they were um, with the DS. No DST, the yeah, minimum tax. Yeah, minimum tax. Um, what would become of the? How much more would the smaller companies mm-hmm. or smaller players suffer? We started having that conversation right from was it just months or, or weeks after the DST had been introduced? Mm-hmm. Why uh, no DST? Minimum tax. I don't yeah. know. Why I keep on <laughs> confusing them. The minimum tax had been um, introduced. KQ filed, and they were like, you know what? We we, we can't pay this. Mm-hmm. We can't afford it. Yeah. And they were they were actually exempted. So people were like. So now, if if K if KQ was like uh, could not pay that much, mm-hmm. could not afford that money, that yeah. tax, what do you expect of us? Mm. And and it's very unfortunate because now you ask yourself whether the government really cares about you. Yet you see the government is your employee, mm-hmm. so you wonder if your employee really cares about you and is out to give you the best. Because if that happens, you need to change your employees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you you you, see, you you want to go to where? Rwanda? No, I'm waiting for next. Actually, me, me, I learn French and escape this country, and I go nah, to. Nah, 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 <laughs> nah. But no. um, nah, we have to. Uh, 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 <laughs> this is our country, man. Uh, Kigen, if you're an athlete and Bahrain comes to you with money, ten million. Let me tell you what. You won't move. I'm not gonna move. Come this on. is this is my Come country. On. Wait, this is my country. <laughs> I agree that we have challenges. It's not a perfect country, but it's still my country. Wherever you go, you're not going to you're not going to heaven. All right. If, if there there are still challenges in those areas to live a that life you're going to have. Kigen, Kigen, Kigen let me tell country. you something. If your country is is having challenges and your leadership of that country is which is the government is putting in efforts to change that situation, yeah. you don't mind staying back. No, that, no, 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 no. Let no, me no. tell you why I'm saying that because you see how you, you can't escape you because the kitchen the, because the kitchen is too hot. You see, you can't what, escape because, no, you because you're asbe- having issues. If the kitchen you is try, too hot, you, you look for an asbestos um, no, uh, apron. Be part of the solution. You find Easter. a way of, of in as much as things are bad. Yeah, be part of the solutions because these countries, these countries are, are have not these countries that are developed today. Mm. They were not very. They, you know, they didn't wake up as developed. You know, in 1918, when when the when the First World War was ending, Russian soldiers were fight, were fighting barefoot, and you know the Russian. Winter is the worst winter ever. Mm-hmm. This and today, Russia is a superpower. Now that you're making country, comparisons, people, can you compare ourselves with Singapore? No, this with the people, Asian giants, with whom we were in the people, same level the, in 1963. Yeah. So the Asian What tigers, the Asian that? tigers. Yeah. At 1963, even uh, Kenya was better than them. Exactly. So did they run away from their country? What as did you, they as do? you guys What want did to do, they, they didn't run away from their country. Did. What they did is they became <laughs> part of the solution. No, this is our country. We can't run away, man. Okay. What Where are we doing? What are we doing when they were doing that? Your patriotism level is zero zero. What were they doing when we were? What were we doing when these people were being patriotic? Because now you're. We, we've you're, had challenges that I accept, but that, that doesn't mean that we ran away. <laughs> No, no, let me let me tell you. Away. What would you Let's say? Be part of the what would you say? When we started this conversation, you're like you see some element of desperation. You had that, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you see how this whole how this government came up with this whole taxes issues thing. Uh, when they came up with DST, it was to raise money, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. to raise to to improve the debt collect the the, the revenues collected yeah. from the. Um, do you see? Do you know how they worked? They were like, we need 24 billion. How are we going to get this? Then they come up with a tax. Yeah, they come up with a tax too. So you see, they're working backwards. So, so Easter, just because they've done that, you're not coming should, up with a tax. Should we run away? Should we run away from this country just because they've done that? No. <laughs> well, no. unless you're okay, um, Tata, really, you cannot tell. Because what, what are we, what are you doing? We can't. In your capacity as an individual, country. what are you, what, what can you do? In my capacity yeah. as an individual, yeah. I'm already doing something yeah. through this podcast. I know <laughs> Guriatani is learning a lot, and you know. It, Trying to, and even and even former leaders, former mm-hmm. people who will go to the central bank, to the treasury, they are listening to this podcast. And please, our, our viewers and listeners, <laughs> our Twitter handle at marketmap uh, at marketmap underscore ke yep. LinkedIn yep. Kenya's marketmap. Yep. Go to our website, 
kenyasmarketmap.com and tell us what you think about these people who are unpatriotic here <laughs> what should and we I do like, to them? i like i like our closing tag that this is just um Uh, it's nothing personal it's just <laughs> it's business, business. Yeah. so please if you see me I'll say that don't stone me <laughs> yeah, I'm not patriotic but yeah. you, you understand I really yeah. I was really sort of can I say pissed or no disappointed at the fact that the government looks at this whole thing from a specter of money they just want 24 billion extra 24 billion then they know they work backwards to see that how are we going to squeeze this 24 billion out of this population out of this citizenry yeah. and they come up with the tax mm-hmm. a Actually, tax that uh-huh. they don't even care it's so myopic like Kalia said I agree. you don't even care that you you want your 24 billion now you don't care how it's going to affect your 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 country's um we have we had the economic um what is it 2030 vision yeah, 2030, 2030 yeah How are you going to do that? How are you going to achieve such um, plans, strategic plans for your country's economic um, prosperity? Yeah. If you have this level of myop- myopia in your in your government. Um do you know what? Um it's it's not coincidence that it's myopic. It is myopic because unfortunately and I say this with a lot of sadness, in Kenya we don't have a tax policy. What do you mean? I think we have multiple policies. We yeah. have multiple policies that move around and mm-hmm. are, are just, you know, they're just bombarding each mm-hmm. other, you know. Th- there's no tax policy that you can lay on the ground that this is Kenya's tax policy. This is how things move and mm-hmm. and the likes. And I don't think I don't think I'm not sure if KRA is mandated to do that. It's probably the treasury who, mm-hmm. who should do that. Do so we really need taxes. that yeah, because, because through the public finance uh, is it, uh, PFM. Yeah. Because uh, an even important reason why I'm insisting on yeah. that is because of predictability when it comes to tax regime yeah. because mm-hmm. that is one thing that you know the, the the private sector have been lamenting about mm-hmm. in this country mm-hmm. because what who are wanakaza when yeah. it gets to april may <laughs> july what mm-hmm. wanakaza chief yeah. business people wanakaza yeah. you know what because mm-hmm. you don't know what treasury is going to come up with new tax? in that in yeah. that in that yeah. in that bill yeah. that is going to to parliament to the budget mm-hmm. you don't know wana, what wanakaza you know your business mm-hmm. you might you might close your business mm-hmm. because they might come up with a certain tax that will yeah. quash Some so we, we really need predictability in our tax regime. Yeah. That's the, okay, yeah. Personally I think we have the tax policies that are known. We know how our income tax is, we know uh VAT, all these other taxes that are there. Uh, we know the policies. Mm-hmm. However, for me the biggest issue is that the way this regime, the current government regime has run things, it is forcing the treasury whose agent whose collection agent is the care yeah, yeah. they are forced to be reactive rather, rather than proactive yeah. because already you've made decisions into so called legacy projects mm. Yeah. Mm. that are white um, elephants the projects that are not doing well yeah. um so you see things yeah. something like the sgr yeah. which mm-hmm. has been operational since is it 2017 Um, um, I don't yeah yeah start yeah. June 7 2017 yeah hasn't made any profit does not look to have any signs of of making <laughs> profit yeah, yeah making yeah so that is money wasted <laughs> they've tried to force um <laughs> cargo people who are transporting cargo to try to use the SGR mm. it's not working it is 11% of our Oh, we've had sound. a lot of expenditure in uh, Lamu and Lapset probably in the long term it will work out I am not sure in five months of operations <laughs> i think they've only had four five, ships five is it Kalia. five only four five. ships docking um so as in hey, you, you we Kalia. are now forced <laughs> the kra is now forced to to try and plug this deficit mm. because we need because for me I, i i strongly believe that our current tax policies are driven by the debt that we've taken up absolutely absolutely yeah. and because of that we are forced to be reactionary and so Now that you've mentioned that. Let me let me first let me first disagree with you. Again. <laughs> Again. From from my understanding of economics and yeah. this this goes mm. hand to hand with my personal beliefs. Mm. You don't build infrastructure for national infrastructure that is mm-hmm. for purposes of it repaying itself. Do you know why? You look at the at the at the meter gauge railway mm. right it's yeah. still being used up to today and this is mm-hmm. something that was was it, it reached kisumu the port of kisumu in mm. 1900 yeah. right 1906 and it's still being used way. today so you can't measure profitability and to 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 make our viewers just to to elaborate this point tell you what if you have a small village okay 
and this small village has a has a grandmother with a small grass hatched house there and you have another area which is is is, is an industrial area mm-hmm. when you're supplying electricity you don't say that as we are supplying electricity just based on profitability we will supply to the industrial estate because we know this industrial estate they have the capacity to pay and will earn our profits back we can't sup- we can't supply to this small village in this small village in that grass hatched house there is a little girl there who just needs an illumination from a light bulb to read and achieve her dreams mm-hmm. so you can't really measure national infrastructure based on profitability okay yes feasibility studies are done but for me that, that that is my own belief but coming back to the debt issue which is making treasury become proactive reactive, reactive is it's my my biggest concern is the fact that we've been living beyond our means okay so if you look at the last eight years on average our revenue to we've been living on a, on a, on a revenue to expense deficit of 40 percent mm-hmm. we've accumulated five trillion Mm. in debt over here. good Mr. Mm? Mr. you were explaining a point oh, so i was saying um i don't think it's right to compare these two projects yeah the railway one has been con- constructed in 1906 and sgr because yeah. first of all when this railway was being constructed mm-hmm. we it was very much needed it was connecting um the port to you now these other interior countries it, it, it came to kisumu then from kisumu the cargo was to to go via the through was, the was to go to Uganda yeah through Lake Victoria right yeah it was very much needed at that point plus there was no alternative it was cars it was, was transport the other alternative was transportation by road um the penetration of the connectivity of the country in terms of road penetrations and all that it wasn't that good so when you were constructing this it was not that it was not so um needed that you have to you have to compare it now with sgr as you are right now because at the moment sgr we have first of all it doesn't make economic sense it's unfortunate because why why is the government what is the government hiding from releasing these papers if 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 i bought this if if you guys gave me um some money okay to do something a common project let's say buy land yeah then i go buy this piece of land then you guys come and view that piece of land and uh-huh. you're like you know what we really don't think this the value of this land is commensurate to the money we gave you to get us this piece of land then for some reason i'm hiding um i don't want to tell you who, from whom i bought this land uh-huh. i would, i believe that if you do if, if your hands are clean you re- literally have nothing to hide yeah we, and we, so i don't we, know what the government is hiding uh-huh. if it's not the case that the economic um viability for this um project sgr was not done and because these people there's even a time they're talking about buses that had been bought at very high price yeah and th- that's that's the thing with me so if, the only problem i have with the sgr is just the cost i feel the cost was very much inflated you yeah. feel that and easter easter no, I, I, it is true i i i know <laughs> easter has mentioned about the government not releasing you know the 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 contracts to do with the sdr because we saw wanjiru gikonyo of tisa yeah. and and khalif khalif yeah. of uh, of muhuri yeah. they launched a, peti- a filed a petition at the mombasa high court mm-hmm. seeking the contracts of sgr you know to be made public yeah. Yeah. but then the um, the attorney general of kenya you know said this you know the court should should ignore that because they have not gone through the 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 the, the processes mm-hmm. That is a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to enlighten our viewers about this. There's a podcast called Foreign Policy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there was a time they were talking about debts in Africa, Chinese debts particularly, you mm-hmm. know, loans that have been given by by the Chinese mm-hmm. to African countries, mm-hmm. the likes of Zambia, Kenya and many others Ethiopia. And an interesting thing that I learned from that podcast is that for these contracts, one of the clauses there is that this these contracts should not be made public that's that's one of the clauses in those contracts so you can't and then another interesting thing that really shocked and and you know wrecked my heart is that sometimes these chinese lenders they have escrow, uh, escrow accounts with with the gov- with government accounts so for example you might find that for example i'm, I'm not sure about this <laughs> yeah. a chinese lender like exim bank would probably have uh an escrow account with the KRE. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So if Kenya happens to default at any time, they just go into KRA coffers and gets their own money. So th- you see the way you guys are looking at me, you are shocked. It's outrageous, right? That's why that's why they can't be released to you know they they, they can't be made public because it's out- it's outrageous. It's I would like to imagine that those even if that appears in the contract, it is stip- where if in the contract it's stipulated that these things shouldn't be made public. It's because of the, the, such 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 clauses that they know that the citizenry would oppose. They would be like definitely. Would you if you <laughs> if you see that if you had to see that in a contract. Then you're like, um, I should have your KRA, not not pin. I should have your ATM bank and uh, pin and and a card and all that, so that if you fail to give me this money, I'm going to withdraw it, uh, withdraw the money and get it, pay myself so more or less. Um, anyone would not agree to such. You understand? Not because you're planning to default, but because why 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 is it called a pin or is it called a personal <laughs> Because no one should have it. Banks, bank accounts, and what is there are personal um, information. Yeah. Yeah. And as, um, in as much as you owe me, there are other ways of securing debt. Not not having this is like imprisoning someone and putting him at gunpoint. <laughs> and it, they know so well the government, the GOK knows so well <laughs> yeah. that they did not need this project. That if that such were the terms yeah. of get, and this is another reason why we are so deeply into debt. Our debt are is the, the debts we, the type of debts we take. They are really the the. the the terms are really not in our favor at all. And we sign those, our, our treasury guys or whoever it is that signs those papers, mm-hmm. they sign them because they're desperate. The Kenya, the GOK is desperate to get this money. So they really, they, it's very easy for them to overlook the terms of these loans just so they get the money. Yeah, because you want the, the money immediately. Yeah. So uh, even with this one, they, they don't want to display to the public because they know so well that people would see here terms that it'll be like, are you guys competent <laughs> enough to to, you know, to, to head our? Easter has mentioned about commercial loans, and I mean in the in the report that um, the central bank yeah. um, submitted to the the Senate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we saw that in two thousand and one, mm. the percentage of the in our external debt, out of our external debt, the percentage of commercial loans mm. wa- was actually. Seven yeah. percent. This is in two thousand and one, mm. just before Moi exited. Mm. Yeah. In twenty ten, it was at zero percent. It's during Kibaki's time, all right? Mm. In twenty twenty, mm. it was thirty one percent. And you can tell what happens in those time scales you've you've mentioned because is it? There's another metric I was looking at the debt the ratio uh-huh. between yeah the debt to the GDP ratios. Yeah. Just before in two or two, just when Kibaki got in, it was. Very low. It was, it was it, very it, it low. Was actually, mm. actually, debt to GDP ratio. Yeah. Interestingly, it was at sixty four percent in two thousand and one. No, I'm I'm talking of two or two when Nani had just gotten into uh-huh. office. Then yeah. when the time he was leaving, I don't well, I don't have that. Leaving, I don't have those statistics. I, I have we, it here. Yeah. By the time he was actually, according to this data, yeah. that Again, CBK submitted mm. to the mm. Senate. Mm. Debt to GDP ratio in two thousand and three was sixty four percent. Yeah. Debt mm-hmm. to GDP ratio in twenty twelve was 38%. This was when Kibaki was leaving. Mm. Debt to GDP ratio in 2020, 69%. And now you look at that. Yeah, actually, mm-hmm. that is what I was on. Because <laughs> I, when I saw so that, I could from, not imagine mm-hmm. how much um, politics um, affects the economy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've always known it. It There's a, a good, there's, there's a significant relation between the two. One affects mm-hmm. the other quite, mm. quite um, significantly. But those numbers, they brought it out very clearly to me. It was... Kibaki gets in when it's that high je- debt to GDP ratio, yeah, yeah, and then comes out, brings it to thirty-eight at thirty. Then the then digital we have, boys we does have, their magic. Yeah, <laughs> like how we call them the digital boys. I didn't. I don't want to call them by their names, <laughs> but they come in, and now you see where we are, and you see where he's going to leave us. Yeah, hopefully then, we'll have another Kibaki. We really hope so, because otherwise, uh, Dan sure. Dan Kalia for president. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but I, yeah, I think. The the evolution of Kenya's public debt. Yeah. I think if you to compare, especially when Kibaki came in, mm. to the time he was leaving, and to when he now the digital boys when they mm-hmm. took over, mm. um, it just shows how well mm-hmm. um, how well Kibaki managed the economy. But I have two I think two thoughts have come to mind. Number one, it's the Kibaki clearly was mm. b- 
big on fostering environments where economies can grow mm. businesses can grow um his sources of debt was mostly multilateral yeah. yeah um and i think his policies he was trying to ensure back then like i think getting loans was not so hard mm. if there's anyone who went to campus um during the kibaki days um like me i think i found a mix of both um almost everyone has a student account for cop bank <laughs> Mm-hmm. the the year it was called the year mm-hmm. year account like back then like banks were very aggressive in g- getting guys to open accounts yeah. like you would find them putting tents in, sc- in in school so for me cop like i there are so many people who i know my peers yeah. who have who had that copy i card and there are so many people who are able to like easily access credit from banks it was not such a hard struggle yeah. than that was during the Kibaki Kibaki, Kibaki era. like he was very big on ensuring businesses are doing okay mm-hmm. and which and that's the backbone of of the economy and then now we get the current regime whose focus was now on more on infrastructure and not really helping the private sector yeah. and now we are seeing those decisions slowly catching up to us mm-hmm. you find that the central bank governor was admitting that Kenya might struggle mm-hmm. to repay that, that yeah. uh, in the future and going back to what Kigen was arguing about you cannot put a value as such on infrastructure spending <laughs> uh, because no, you, you cannot you assess it, it on profitability yeah you can't assess it on profitability that is true but you have to look at its impact on the economy as a gender, as a whole so when you when you brought about um, electricity going to homes and someone being able to study overnight and do well yeah eventually like this person is going to grow and probably be a productive member of society you know either start something get a good job yeah. be able to support uh, the, the the society around him or her yeah. and grow we are talking about the the railway yeah the railway was essential in the transportation of goods and services across Kenya into Uganda it facilitated trade between the two countries the different towns that grew along the railway lines like those were a direct benefit of such uh, development for yeah. the SGR we spent all this money allegedly to move to transport people and goods people don't want to transport goods <laughs> on the SGR uh, you are having to force them because your prices are not competitive yeah. uh, so generally it hasn't um, there hasn't been a considerable growth of any town because of the SGR mm-hmm. to be honest yeah. uh, voi hasn't grown as much as it was supposed to be but people are still Kenyans being Kenyans you know you'd still find a kaploti near near sgr you're being told of course that was the Hapa, yeah because you know? that was the hype back yeah, then but yeah. its impact on the economy the externalities association yeah. associ- uh, associated with um this investment yeah. Yeah. i cannot it's not that significant yeah, as if you're looking at the opportunity cost yeah. of the amount of money that would have been used then that's the difference they've mm. made a lot of investment probably in roads mm. uh, which could help mm. in the transportation of goods and services food for farmers to the market all that that helps but i think for the sgr for me at this point i'm still not convinced that in as much as it's an infrastructure development that can, should not or ideally you can argue should not be measured on profitability yeah i still feel it wasn't the best <laughs> <laughs> okay allow me to go back to that um i am not saying that the sgr okay i i <laughs> Okay I'm not I'm not a supporter of the SGR mm-hmm. if anything yeah. the contrary my point was let's not be measuring development projects just on profitability because first of all if you ask me I don't think we should have had the SGR we should have just rehabilitated the meter gauge railway but moving aside from that you mentioned opportunity cost which is very very mm. important yeah. because yeah. in economics you look at everything from opportunity cost yeah. tell you what If you look at the 27 km expressway mm-hmm. from Rolongo to Westlands the opportunity cost is we are, we are being told that it will take around approximately 30 years you mm-hmm. know for for the for the BOT the buy operate and transfer and transfer to mm-hmm. take place right yeah. so that the it's the, the Kenya government now owns it mm-hmm. so the opportunity cost here is not having any other project in Nairobi that would compete mm. with expressway, the expressway mm-hmm. for the next 30 years yeah. that's the opportunity cost yeah. but do we need it do we need it does the expressway solve 
all the traffic congestion needs that we it doesn't for solve, which it was it doesn't solve all the traffic yeah, yeah. problems but it is for me i believe it's it's going to be a game changer definitely the, the expressway it's yeah. going to be so we can overlook the what you're calling the, the opportunity cost of not having yeah. putting all other plans on on hold yeah. uh, i was just years. trying to elaborate to to our viewers yeah. more about what how opportunity cost is viewed <laughs> in, from an economic angle uh, and i think i have a question for you guys yeah i'm, I'm looking at the 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 CBK report that was presented to the Senate yeah. and it says the one this particular segment is displays um the uh, of a uh, chart of of composition of external debt by lender category mm-hmm. and what you can see there is before Kitambo Kiasi you could see the most of the debt yeah. that Kenya took was from either multilaterals and 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 bilateral um lenders mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but later later in later years you're seeing commercial debt is really expanding commercial yeah. debt is really expanding and commercial debt is expensive you see multilaterals and and bilateral um, partners the, the loans are tend to be largely concessional the, you can uh, you can debate yeah, on the moratorium yeah you mm-hmm. understand in terms of the period of payment and even the interest rates some of them even have grace periods yeah mm-hmm. which are which is really what you could what you should be looking at as a government that is seeking to to get funding mm-hmm. but now we are seeing the the the, the uh, larger chunk of this debt being attributed being um occupied by commercial mm-hmm. debt these are banks mm-hmm. banks we we just had a talk about this when you talk about treasury bills and bonds those are commercial debt mm-hmm. um the rate that the government is paying for this for this debt is as high as 12.7 um for in the IFB 20 in the oh yeah, in the latest, yeah but that's local, local that's local debt yeah so, so uh, it's still high nonetheless it is uh, still more expensive than the what they were using before in the chibaki area for example multilateral and bilateral so what what do you go who guys what do you think does it that does speak to um desperation that and if it's desperation does it mean that these multilateral and bilateral partners that the country had before mm-hmm. are now shying away from the GOK um, i know you, you already is, know my answer, answer. <laughs> okay let me so um going commercial yeah. seemed to be a deliberate move by especially um when the jubilee government got into power. into power um but then there are some advantages of joining or going for commercial Lo, um that that yeah. uh basically it's the biggest is really it sends a signal to the international markets uh-huh. that this is a fairly it's a maturing market okay. where you can trust your funds they it's being run properly okay. um it is if we, if if investors are willing to put up money and probably mm. oversubscribe then it mm-hmm. tells them that this is a market where there's confidence that it's going to be stable yeah. uh it's a growing market so yeah. it's a market that's going to do well and a a consequence a positive consequence of that is that usually it would lead to probably more investment into the country because yeah. Yeah. more people consider it as an investment destination yeah that's one the other thing with kenya especially moving from a low income country mm. to middle yeah, income middle income country yeah we rebased our economy in 2014 yeah, yeah with that rebasing then by that you i think there are some facilities which you no longer qualify for yeah uh, especially from hmm. mega which is the arm of the world bank okay. yeah. that now is those have um facilities that are dedicated to low income countries okay. And okay. so with that you have to look for other sources, sources of, of of capital fund, yeah. yeah and and of funding yeah. um which on paper it wasn't a bad idea because here's the thing with commercial uh, commercial lending yeah when you tap into the commercial market then you have to make sure that whatever how wherever you're going to spend that money yeah. should be something that is able to now repay mm. the, the the fund mm. because mm. guys from commercial mark they do not care yeah they exactly. do not care about the economy is doing bad yeah. they yeah. want their money back yeah, so for you yeah. like renegotiation for that compared to multilateral and bilateral mm. agreements are harder mm. so on one end the message that Kenya was trying to send out is that yo we are going to allocate these funds properly it's going to contribute to the growth of our economy mm-hmm. and we are just going to use that money and we're going to be sufficient um, we're going to be able to sufficiently money cover is, yeah. and service uh, the payments as uh, and when they fall uh, due i think yeah. that is why the we saw the control of budget was like um was s- sort of sending a warning to the treasury on payment of commerce of, of commitment fees to loans yeah we paid 1.7 like, just to commit 1.7 billion yeah as yeah. commitment fees yeah. 
so he was she was like um that's too much and my initially my my thoughts were that she had a problem with the with the commitment fees that's not the case she had a problem with taking up more debt because yeah, she was like those debts uh-huh. they are not the the terms are just like we've said are not favorable yeah. again what Kelly has talked about because the um the ch- if you look at the composition of this debt that the country has accrued the chunk of it um attributed by commercial loans are, are expanding are growing mm-hmm. day by day so i think that's what she her concern was yeah. that we're taking up more expensive and and f- uh loans for which ta- whose terms are very unfavorable yeah, yeah cuz cuz i mean cons- i mean commitment fees are, are common phenomenon even in, in corporates mm. but for me my biggest issue when it comes to debt conversation has actually been you know it's 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 not bad to borrow Mm-hmm. Okay people even for your business to scale m- most of the people use that yeah. Yeah. yeah but now the problem is um do you know what you're doing do you know what mm-hmm. you're doing yeah. because the president while he was the mini- president Kenyatta when he was the minister of finance mm-hmm. i mean he, he told Kenyans openly that we lose a third of our budget yeah and is the fa- is and the one who famously mm-hmm. had the computer error the extra mm-hmm. zero <laughs> Let, let's not get there but um now let's let's talk about about fuel man oh. yeah um fuel again fuel rose epra all time high yeah, yeah. epra decided to raise fuel prices proper a proper one a good yeah. one yeah. um okay. and of course there has been a lot of outcry uh, but the thing is the biggest question that i had when i saw it, it was you look at the landed cost of fuel mm-hmm. and it had actually gone down mm. for was it for super and diesel mm-hmm. no for kerosene and diesel and then it had gone slightly up for super but mm-hmm. nothing to justify the big increase the seven mm-hmm. shilling increase to 12 shilling increase per liter and my question was okay so why 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 has uh-huh. fuel price gone that up it's, considering the underlying uh-huh. price did not mm-hmm. go it's it's actually it's actually a subsidy issue Yeah. because in April this year we saw the government introduced a subsidy to yeah. cushion the Kenyan taxpayers. Yeah. So the subsidy was the 7 shilling subsidy on 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 petrol, uh, seven, a 9 shilling subsidy on diesel and an 11 shilling subsidy on kerosene. So the government removed this as at September 14th, right? Uh, and this was what was actually protecting Kenyans. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Because now since that for me in april when i saw that i was like ah this is very good and i expected this to 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 you know, go up to june of 2022 because i was like now they've introduced it of course they'll put money for it in the in in the in the budget. in the 21 22 budget so that we have it at least for for a long time mm-hmm. but lo and behold that wasn't the case um but my the key question that we should be asking you know because mm-hmm. for someone who's in mandera is buying it at 147 shillings mm-hmm. right it's crazy yeah. the real question is why do you have nine different tax and levies on one product <laughs> is it justifiable that the government for every 100 for 130 shillings mm-hmm. they are taking 70 shillings is, is does that make sense well i think it goes Back. that should be the real question that's the real question but it goes back to demand elasticity and inelasticity mm. so we saw that transport mm. when the economic survey was released yeah. transport contributes uh, 9% i think to the total gdp um so that's a fairly significant tr- chunk yeah. people always need to move to and fro <laughs> from yeah. work yeah um, whether you're using private means whether you're using public means mm. but people need to travel mm. and people need to move around so because of that the government knows if they raise the taxes yeah you have no the guys yeah. will complain but they'll still pay and and yeah. kenyans should expect um low amount of tokens for the amount you've been paying mm. you've been using yeah. to buy um electricity oh, okay. mm-hmm. because the fuel the fuel cost charge mm-hmm. has actually increased Yeah. The, oh, if you look if you normally look at your token receipt there are different costs you mm-hmm. know now there's the fuel cost charge because KPLC uses a significant amount of of, of fuel. Yeah. yeah. So that is going to increase. Um mm-hmm. and then actually Kenyans are, are crying but they have to cry even more mm-hmm. because we are seeing in as it KRA announced in August that mm-hmm. uh as at October this year um the inflation, inflation yeah inflation adjustment on the excise mm. on the excise duty mm. Mm. on the excise tax 
now so this this will 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 make fuel prices go higher again yeah. mm-hmm. than it is right yeah. now yeah. so prepare yourself from next month we're going to we're going to pay more let, so, let me let me talk about this inflation adjustment i think this is the silliest <laughs> thing i have ever seen in my considerably short life uh-huh. <laughs> because it does not it makes zero sense for kra to say oh inflation is going up yeah. so we need to adjust for it uh, in our revenue collections when whatever amount that you're collecting is already adjusted for inflation, inflation yeah yeah because if i am a producer or i'm a buyer and kigen you are a producer of a good yeah raw materials on your goods have gone up yeah so what do you do i raise the prices you raise the prices mm. so for me i come and on that on those raised prices you are charged a tax yeah. vat mm. so previously if your item was costing 10 bob yeah, yeah it's still 16% uh, yeah, of 10 bob of 10 bob yeah. and now 20 you, shillings 16% of so you've already collected an inflation adjusted yeah. Yeah. I see your amount yeah. so why are you going to again adjust, adjust for inflation causing more inflation yeah. that you're going to adjust for Again, 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 again. So again. It's, it's so a spiral thing. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's the thing also with the inflation that we're seeing in Kenya at this yeah. point in time. You know, this week I read somewhere that um, if you look at the developing countries, specifically uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, mm-hmm. that our GDP actually grows. Our GDP, our GDP grows courtesy of inflation and nothing else. <laughs> There's no there's there's really not much growth uh, it's just inflation so yeah. you see our gdp has so moved no, from no 100 100 billion us dollars to 102 mm. us billion dollars mm-hmm. and the actually the increase is not in the increase because of more volumes of goods have increased mm, yeah. yes there's volumes of goods but also the price the value, because yeah. of inflation yeah. yeah yeah and that is what i think another thing that is showing a structural problem with our economy you know i have Uh, what, what I would ask myself is when these guys were coming up with this um, subsidy mm-hmm. what was the, before I come to even that what was there before before April like we were surviving without a subsidy yeah. why would we do have all this um, the prices the fuel prices going that high and another thing um, when they were coming up with now this subsidy Mm-hmm. did they not think about the sustainability of such a thing such a government intervention mechanism well, we have to repair our debts another thing <laughs> yeah exactly again desperation <laughs> now you're like hey, by the, this thing we gave you we don't think we can afford it anymore this benefit yeah because so that we, the, so subsidy, we it out. the subsidy was money taken away from suppliers yeah mm. in the in 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 their supplier margin mm. yeah so that was where the subsidy came from okay. yeah so, so the, think the suppliers, are now returned to so the government years. did not at inject money No, they just told uh, suppliers you guys your margins uh, you you're going to have to them. yeah take a lower margin. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now the, again when you were just saying the I uh, giving us the highlights of what you are to talk about today. Um you said there's going to be a link between um from this hike in fuel prices to mm-hmm. to it was going to create a, an uh, inflation. Yeah. That's cost pushing inflation. Mm-hmm. Um that was given Yeah. Yeah, it is giving because now you look at we've started seeing the, the the linkages that are happening in the market that because of one the price of the cost of production of one 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 product which is power you're seeing the cost being passed to the consumer. Now with the same amount you used to buy 100 tokens before now you can you can only get 80. Mm-hmm. That's example. I, I, yeah. I that's just an example. I don't know how much it is. Mm-hmm. But you get. Yeah. And yeah. so it is yet to to be experienced in other almost every other product every other mm-hmm. what do you call it it's a ripple it's effect like, yeah it's yeah. a ripple effect domino effect mm-hmm. anyway. yeah yeah so yeah we are going to see inflation rising even further i think the inflation report should be coming out sometime this month mm. for the month um yeah so we see, we've seen the linkages between fuel cost is going to cause of course um transport cost is going yeah. to go high yeah. because i'm i'm assuming Uh, naturally matatus are going to be charging higher fares definitely and uh, people are going to be paying more to travel to and fro yeah. um kerosene is going to go up so the the kawaida monanch is going to struggle yeah. um but now the question is with this inflation that is steadily going up my question now goes to inflation management by the cbk yeah. uh because what that's what one of the cbk's mandates mandates yeah. um price control and inflation um 
so with the CBK taking a position of <laughs> of kind of monitoring what banks are going to yes. do uh-huh. instead of the core uh-huh. business what are they going to do in that case are they going to be like okay sawa so we have to raise our rates and do you know what kalia mm-hmm. when it comes to when it comes to 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 this type of inflation you know cbk only has monetary tools mm. to affect infl- to 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 deal control with inflation mm-hmm. control inflation but then for this case where it's a product the price of a product has increased over 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 horizontal product mm-hmm. which is fuel has increased so there's a ripple effect with other products mm-hmm. there's nothing that cbk can do there <laughs> mm. what, what can they do well yeah well, the the only guys who can do this is the people who possess the fiscal policy, instruments yeah. which is treasury yeah. mm-hmm. just take out these taxes that you nine taxes and levies that you're putting to Kenyans on one specific product unfortunately we know the likelihood things. we know the likelihood of that it's very low yeah and that, again um can we now like go to now another aspect of this all fuel thing mm-hmm. we have fuel deposits in Kenya in mm-hmm. in in, in Turkana Yeah we saw ta- we saw Talo they they revised their whole outlook yeah. on on on, yeah. on the fuel yeah. they actually said that um the the de- yeah. uh, deposit has actually increased to 533 million mm-hmm. yeah. barrels i think from 400 and something so uh, it it has actually increased um mm. the the output they they say that they have the capacity to now uh, extract, extract 120 barrels mm-hmm. each and every day um but we are seeing challenges in terms of technologies to yeah. doing that but there hasn't yeah. been much clarity on that purpose because yeah. we saw in 2019 there were i think um some some i think was it 2 million barrels or 2000 barrels that were were exported from the country yeah. we sp- and then things went quiet again mm-hmm. and you know we didn't know what was happening we saw financial so, challenges with talo yeah. many things are happening there hasn't been a lot of clarity there you see uh, we, the year you just mentioned yeah. i think that was just us testing the, the international markets international oil markets mm-hmm. and the result was very good mm-hmm. um, our market is very comp- the quality of our market is, of our oil is very competitive in the global oil markets okay. and so unfortunately when you've just when you said i'm um, just to enlighten our, our viewers and and listeners when you mention about a commercially extractable oil mm-hmm. it's it doesn't mean that that's the deposit the deposit could be is actually very much more than that yes it's just that the technology um places are a hindrance that the, it's not advanced enough to enable us extract all of this oil yeah for me so, i think with with the whole oil thing this whole for me i feel like you in the football very, you seem very pessimistic no it's like a football <laughs> transfer season okay every year uh, if if for the years where manchester united used to be linked oh, no. with with wesley schneider every every transfer season there was something link the linkages it's not it does not materialize so for me to be honest I'm, it's not something that i'm going to get excited about uh, or put a lot of thought until when but you we see, see that and, it's, and, and Kalia, just, just for the record Kalia, <laughs> again I, you should never talk about small clubs in this very big podcast <laughs> <laughs> continue Amy, um, i was i was floating when, when whenever the topic comes into, into yeah, football but yeah, yeah that's for me i wouldn't get excited so, by you see Kalia, we just talked about um the shilling being had had hit yeah mm-hmm. um when, you see one of the instruments we have is trade Yeah. trade and what we trade in increasing our our exports mm-hmm. one of the things we have you're in a position to really increase our exports on or really to stabilize the shilling is either you increase your exports or you reduce your imports right mm-hmm. so we we have to look at our market and and, and explore far and wide and see what is this what are these um products or services really mm-hmm. products that we have the potential of exporting or that you can produce so that you can cut on our imports of the same products. I think we, act- we actually oil is that. one of them. Oil is one of them. And so we really can't escape this. We have to really look at this matter seriously because we we need to we have to the shilling is taking a, a hit. Uh there's no other because we are, we are trying to brainstorm with Kanye But but, the, you, but like, you know what you're saying what, what you're saying is that your argument actually if if the way I'm looking at it uh. is you know when the shilling gets a hit it's actually good for Kenyan tea farmers uh, who yeah. are exporting because mm. Kenyan products becomes cheaper 
that is the yeah, market. that is good but because you are a net importing country yeah then overall uh, to the economy it's not bad. going it's to be good. worse like the shilling getting the, the, the shilling depreciating uh, yeah because our, now oh yeah yeah by the days we're buying is going to be more expensive so the, again going back to the inflation yeah. the cost of living is going to mm, go high uh, so yeah. that's the thing had we been a net exporting country we or had the nini yeah. had the deficit not been that big export yeah. import to export mm. then i wouldn't because china that's china, where, china that, deliberately yeah. undervalues, uh, undervalues their, their currency so that their products are competitive but for us because we are a net importing country then that does not help it, it um, sense, and yeah. then again i think our shilling is going to just keep oh. struggling Wait, because number I, I one said, I sorry said yen yen is japanese right yeah. or is it chinese chinese japanese. yen japanese yuan one of the two <laughs> anyway. chinese yeah. yen, no anyway i was saying yeah. so for the kenya shilling i feel it's going to struggle because at the moment when we look at our composition of our total debt mm. external debt is higher mm. than than mm than local debt. Yeah. So every time we need to make a repayment if it's on interest or the principal that is going to have an effect on shilling. the shilling. Regardless. And I was just and looking then at some, the uh-huh. import that you're going to make because you're a net importing country. Yeah. Yeah. Then the CBK like has a lot of work to try and make sure that the shilling stabilizes. Kalia, do you feel do you feel that <laughs> that the C, that the CBK should be really controlling the Kenyan shilling? I I I have varied opinions on that. It should but be, it I, should. I just want to enlighten our viewers. I came across um a Bloomberg um report that actually it's 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 predicting that in the next seven months the Kenyan shilling would probably at be at 117 shillings considering that we are heading into an election. <laughs> well, yeah, because you can imagine uh normally mm. uh election year the nsc is expected to take a hit um foreign investors who are approximately half of the total market yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of they volume. actually 70%, 70%. 70%. Yeah. yeah so there's there's going to be a huge capital out, uh, out capital yeah. flight mm. uh, next year mm. most likely so that um is going to contribute further to the worsening of the, of the shilling yeah. to your question on whether cbk should Uh, should they should they be controlling in an ideal world they should not mm-hmm. but in Kenya because we have that big that much external debt it's in it is in our own best interest to, do to try and control it because otherwise then because for every shilling i think someone needs to do the math for every shilling that they, they that we lose yeah. that adds an additional several billion on what we need to pay um because mm-hmm. just of the exchange rate okay. fluctuation yeah. Yeah. yeah so because if you have if it's one because if you are at 110 for the same dollar yeah. that's another 10 bob mm. that you need to pay mm. so because of that the cbk just has to do whatever play some dark arts it's and ensure powers. yeah that, that the yeah. shilling is is okay so yeah um that has been our pod for this week episode 5 So yes, episode 5 of the Market Map podcast. Kindly uh, remember to like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, give your thoughts. Um put a like on the video. Yeah, we are also available on Google Podcast, we are on uh, Spotify, we are on Apple Podcast, we are on Anchor, all the places. Go check out our content way back from episode 1 we did a special edition on the economic survey those yeah. released by KNBS yeah. lots of information there lots of insights we broke down the numbers for you so go and check that out yeah um yeah so this has been an awesome discussion uh thanks Kigen thanks Ista okay. and i have been your host Daniel Kalia until next time Remember. have an amazing week it's <laughs> it's not anything it's not personal it's just business it's just business yeah <laughs>